Good afternoon. Today I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on creating an event within Wild Apricot or Personify as it's become known. So what we do is based on the type of training that's going on or the CEUs that are awarded, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate an existing event and use most of the information from that event and change what needs to be changed for the new one. So as you can see, we've got a number of different events out here. What I'm going to do is change or duplicate one that I know is, and this is most often the case, that's 3.5 hours. So we've most recently in, in July having the all about air quality. I know this one I created is 3.5 hours. So if we take a look at this one, and I click on it, I have the option up here of editing this existing one or actually going and duplicating. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this event because we know it has a similar CEU value and all the other information such as this about the description, etc., will probably be very similar. Now, we typically have three types. We have a training for new inspectors, which is three CEUs. We have our annual conference, and then we have, obviously, this most common 3.5 hour CEU event, which I'm going to duplicate. So as you can see, after I duplicate it, it actually just says it's a copy of this one. And now I can go in here and hit edit. And this is critical too, because you're just going to do a top-down approach of making changes. When you're ready to actually make this go public, you're going to change this visibility from admin only to public, and, and I'll show that shortly. But once we're in edit mode, now we need to go back through and change all appropriate information. I'm going to just call this test. So this test, Gahi meeting, will be the new name. And you can see that this has been changed up here. Then what's critical as well is you want to go back through here and change the tags. Because this means that now this event is searchable via the web based on the tags. So let's say that this test Gahi meeting we're creating is in fact about mold. So maybe you would enter mold, fungal growth, or any other pertinent tag that makes sense. Maybe Sandy Herrera. And then you want to go over here and make a change to whatever needs to be changed. So we call this test Gahi meeting. And you know all of this information is just simply filling in what makes sense as to what the agenda is and the time frame. So, so with that, you know, what's important is this is powerful because, for example, what I usually do, especially for, you know, the larger seminars and things that we have, like the annual meeting, I include a link. You can insert the link here and put, for example, if it's a LinkedIn address, you can put whatever in here and then insert link. And that makes, you know, Sandy Herrera his name, when you see it on an email sent out, you can click on that and it'll actually bring up his LinkedIn address or any other profile information. So the main idea is to go through here and make sure all of this information has been changed. So for this example, the start date is going to be August 10th at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. So all this other information can stay the same. So no need to change that. Once you've created this base information, you want to go ahead and save it. Then what's critical now, you don't need to change the registration form, that's a constant, but the registration types and settings. So what you're going to do in here is actually step through each individual. So we've got 
one, two, three, four, five. This all needs to be changed to the appropriate dates that it correlates to for within the training. So this is early member training, and we're going to go in here and edit. And the most critical thing here, everything will stay the same, which is the beauty of doing a duplicate event. But you need to change these dates. So this is early registration. So we're going to do from today, which is July 9th. And because we're talking about this being an August 10th training, usually three days prior. So that Wednesday, August 7th is the last day of early registration. So, so that's set up. And you can see that it, it says here in gray, 32 days before start of event. And this is three days before start of event because on Thursday, then you're going to change the date so that it reflects a late registration fee. So now the early, early member registration is done. You can see who it applies to. And you can see the dates that it applies as well. So let's go back and change. Now each of these has to be done. I'm only going to do the two. So late member registration. Let's go and update that one. And we'll go down to the bottom where the dates are and we're going to go into edit mode. And as we mentioned, since our training is August 10th, our late registration is to start that Thursday the 8th up until the date of the registration Saturday the 10th. So you can see two days before start of event and then at start of event. And instead of $25, you can see that the late registration is 35. So once you've saved everything, then and you've updated all of these registration types and you know everything looks good then you're going to change this admin only to public and then you want to save you can see registration is now enabled so how you get the word out, first of all, when you've made that change on our website, you'll see the, the test Gahi meeting is actually on the website as an event, up, upcoming event. See, so let's go over here and take a look at that. Now this is the second test event I've created. So you're going to actually see two. Now we're going to click on events. And here's the test event we created. I'll be deleting these shortly, by the way. So now that's one way that people can obviously see what's going on as far as training. The other that's critical as well is going to be sending emails out. So how is that done? So this is back, we're in edit mode. Now we want to send this out to membership. So you have a set of emails and, and you can adjust these as you want. So announcement one looks like this. I personally like announcement three the best. And I try to send these out at least three prior. Now the reason why I like this one is it has a green register button and it's much easier just to to do. But obviously if you want to go in here and edit, you can see that it personalizes it. You can have this uh, dear contact first name, you know, so this is reading it from our database, the event title, etc. So all this information is is important. So you can make these changes in here. You know, I, I usually give, you know, it could be just announcing it. You can change this to however you want.
So always, always send a test email. And based on the results, you know, make changes or do whatever you need to to ensure, you know, obviously test the links when it comes as an in, in your inbox. So let me go over here now. It should be. Uh, So here's the test message. In my inbox. And just be sure and test, you know, the registration links, test everything out to make sure that it's all correct. And then the last thing is actually to send it out. So here we sent the test. Now I'm not actually going to do this because it is a test. But what you would do is say send now, or you could even schedule it if you wanted to schedule them out. And then once you say send now, it'll ask you what contacts you want to send it to. And there's one that's set up that's all inspection. And, and that will be around 800 that are you know just inspection related contacts that this will go out to and once you do that you'll get an administration notice that it is complete and you're basically done now there are also reports and things that come from this the attendance list you can do registration field registration types so let's go over to an event we know that has registrants which here we know we have 26. So we can go to the report and actually do an attendance list. And I, of course, normally export the PDF and print this out and bring it in. Now, what I do as well is when these people come in, I check them off. I make notes over to the right here about, you know, if they've, if they've paid and everything is good, then there's no issue. But obviously these that are, you know, have registered but not paid, if they've not paid prior to the event, they need to, you know, I write the check number in here. You know, if they don't show up, you know, I, I remove them from the event. I cancel their registration and get rid of them. I do not refund their money if they do not cancel prior to the early registration deadline. So on that Thursday, if early registration stops at Wednesday, on Thursday, if they cancel, I do not refund their money. So that's been the policy that we've gone forth with. Uh, as a courtesy, everyone is understood to either pay prior to the event, or if they don't show up and they paid, then we keep the money. So if I export you can see I have a nice PDF file that is ready to print. And then what I do is I actually take pictures of this after the registration. And you have to go back in and um, let me do that as far as here. To go into registrants, this is another key aspect that you need to go in once you have that list, you check everyone in that checked in. And, and this reconciliation process is critical because this is what awards their CEUs. So this is where this comes into play. So at the event, typically, if you're logging this information, 
you need to check everyone in that was checked in or cancel their their um, registration if they did not show. And like I said, I marked that on their registration, take a picture of it and it's stored in Dropbox uh, under registration roll call. And that's basically it. And right now I'm going to go out there and delete these test meetings because they are actually live. And that's it. Thank you.